such travels, you should happen to drop in on a tiny Connecticut village named Tannen Crossing. You'll see a scene that would look comfortably familiar to the residents of a hundred years ago. But it probably wouldn't even be there today if it weren't for the time and money, lots of money, one person gave to make this restoration possible. This is another side to a person you know as actress and author. She's June Havoc. And we visited her, her entourage of animals, just watch if you think I'm kidding, at Cannon Crossing, Connecticut. I've been coming over to Cannon Crossing for 20 years, adoring the dilapidated old place. Buildings were condemned, it was falling down. And then when three years ago I heard that it was for sale, I couldn't believe my... And nobody wanted it, because there was so much to do to it. So, I hocked everything I owned. I haven't anything anymore, I don't care. I've got Cannon Crossing, and I bought it. I have had a feeling ever since I've been here that I've been oddly on my way to this place all my life. There are eight buildings and four antique shops at Cannon Crossing. Come on in. And people browse, wonderful browsing. Then the schoolhouse, which is a restaurant and also a very dear building. And then in the big red barn, which used to be the packing barn, there are two antique shops and a weaver. She also makes jewelry. She is very talented. It's almost mathematical, isn't it's it? It's very mathematical. That's why I couldn't do it. And then, in what used to be the general store, there's a tinsmith. He makes chandeliers and reproductions. He's an artist. He creates these beautiful things. And then on the weekends, he gets into his little costume, and he makes these exquisite tin things. And his wife is a quilter, and she teaches marvelous things, quilting. They call their shop the Grey Goose. I don't know why, but they refer to it as the Goose. And a painter, beautiful Sandy, who does such beautiful painting. It's, it has a flavor of day before yesterday. My friends thought I was crazy, but you know, I don't think I have a single friend that they will come in and uh, probably they do wonder aloud, why? Why do you want to kill yourself to do something like this? I think that anything I've ever done that I loved enough to kill myself for was worth it. I think you have to have alternates. I don't believe that anyone should go through life, particularly as they begin to mature, and not have lots of alternates, things that you are passionate about. When you begin to lose your passion about things, I think you begin to die a little. And maybe I have too much passion and it wears me out a bit, but I'd rather be worn out from my passions than be a pudding. And so when I did Cannon Crossing, it consumed me. I used to dash out in the snow two years ago when I heard the train coming. I was so thrilled to see the train, to hear the train's voice, that I would run out and I would wave at them and they slowed up at first and they'd look to the, what the, and then finally a train stopped and he opened his little window and he said, what's going on here? And I said, I'm restoring Cannon Crossing. He said, oh yeah? Hmm. And went on. But the next time, they go boop, 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 boop. And they slow up for me. It's our obligation to one another, how much we must love and care for one another, but also how much we must care for the land, for the environment, for the animals. I have a burro who's 22 years old and has emphysema, and a lady who was kind and said he was lonely brought a little pony that they no longer wanted in the family, and they were moving away anyway. It was a rejected animal. When they gave it to me, they said, you don't have to worry about them breeding because a little burro with emphysema who's 22 years old would never breed with a little pony, and the baby is beautiful. No jumpy. No jumpy. Isn't he beautiful? No, wait, just a, just Whoa. a jumpy minute. <laughs> The baby is a mite. It's a little teeny weeny, very temperamental little girl. And uh, I think I'm going to have another one. Any animals are too precious to throw away. That's my train. Isn't that a beautiful sound? You know, when I was a kid in Vaudeville, I lived on trains. And that sound is so magical to me, I cannot tell you. It's one of the reasons I love being here. And we passed through little towns and it always was like this. Maybe I'm coming back to something. I don't know. It's possible. Pia, the other actress, the actress June Havoc, <laughs> will be back on Broadway in April, uh, getting money for Cannon Crossing by starring in a play called Jitters. And she'll be returning to the prime of your life as a guest at that time. Good, nice to see her. I'm glad she's not a pudding. I like that <laughs> expression. <laughs> well, no. April 12th. You know, I really like that foster grandparent program. It's a shame they can't make it possible for more people to get into it. You can as an unpaid volunteer, but not so many as paid. Well, there we are. <laughs>
We hope that you'll be with us again next Saturday at 7 o'clock when we'll be back with the prime of your life. See you then. Be well.